Welcome back. As we continue moving forward with the project, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create an SSL certificate for PF1. We then want to export that certificate and be able to use it on RTR. And also we'll bring up a web server on server one and we'll use that certificate there. Later we'll then, when we install our Linux server, we'll use that SSL certificate there. Now what makes this all possible for us to get a valid certificate, one that's recognizable globally, is that we, we've taken ownership and we've demonstrated ownership of a domain, in our case a child domain. We've created in Azure, all of us have created in Azure a DNS server and the delegation has been completed such that you and I are now responsible for a child of the bobstaco.com domain. In my case I'm responsible for ak.bobstaco.com. I just jumped over to portal.azure.com and you can see here, we all have this. We, we did this in an earlier project where we've all created a, a, a DNS zone and then that, that zone we've delegated from the parent domain, bobstaco.com, uh, to the zone. So you can see here the parent domain and the delegation was necessary. And we, we have read write capabilities. You can see we can add records and such. I've got a, a list here of uh, some of the criteria that we need. So in order to do what we're going to do to request a certificate, we're going to use a, a, a plugin or a package for PFSense called Acme. And that package then talks to an open source project called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a wonderful project in that it allows us to, if we can prove ownership of a domain or prove ownership of a website and a domain name, if you can prove some ownership, then Let's Encrypt will will issue you a an SSL certificate that's good for 90 days at, at no charge. And that, that's really pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. The way that we're going to do it is we're going to use a technology called manual or DNS manual validation. And in manual validation, we would have to manually go in every before the 90 days expires and redo our certificate. But there's also tools within the Acme client that with a little bit more work, you can set this up to where it auto renews so that you don't have to go in and manually do it that after 60 days or whatever time frame you specify, it'll actually renew the certificate on your behalf if you can continue to prove ownership of your domain. So then these are the things that we need. The PFSense box needs to be able to communicate out to the internet. It, it doesn't have to be directly reachable from the internet. It just to be, it has to be able to communicate to the internet. And then I've left a couple links here where, uh, from the documentation from NetGate about some of the, the ways that, the, I guess, some of the things that you need to take into account when you do what we're going to do. But I'll include all of them. But those are the links where a lot of this information came from. So I'm going to jump over then to, to I've got uh, my Win10 machine here is on, is on DevNet. And uh, I'm going to jump into it then and I'm going to remote into PF1. And I'm going to go ahead and install the Acme client and then I'll pick up with you uh, when we start to do the configuration. So I'm over here on my Windows 10 virtual and I've remoted into or I've opened the web browser and, and connected to my PF1 box. You can see here pf1.ak.bobstaco.com. I've installed the Acme package and so it's now here and we just now need to go in and do some configurations with it to get it set up to request a certificate on our behalf. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an account key. We're going to actually create two account keys. We're going to create one for for testing purposes. Let me go ahead and get this created and I'll explain a little bit to you and then we'll we'll pause the video and we'll each create our second one. The first one we're going to create here is I'm calling it staging and that's because from this drop down right here I'm selecting let's encrypt staging Acme version 2 for testing purposes. Okay. You do need to provide a, a valid email address. Not that they they contact you at this address in order to you know to move forward with this, but it is it's a, a level of accountability of, of who's creating the certificate. So once we do that, we select then create new account. It generates this this key for us, and then we go ahead and say we want to register that with the Acme server, and then we go ahead and save it. And we're going to do the same thing again to add another key and I'll pause the video and then we'll talk a little bit about what these keys are for. 
So we've created the two accounts. They're nearly identical except for which server they're using to, to communicate with uh, from uh, Let's Encrypt. So this one goes to, we'll communicate when we use it. Now we're, we're not using it here, we're just creating it. We're gonna use them over, over here in just a minute. But we create them here and so if we want to to test things and, and get, get everything working before we request a certificate, then we'll, we'll reference the, the version two staging server. Once we've got all of everything working okay, then we'll go ahead and we'll switch over to the production server and that'll actually then initiate the request to create a certificate. The reason that there's the two is that this is a free service and there are some limits on how many certificate requests you can make within a given window of time. And, and so to be polite, to, to, to be polite, we're gonna do all of our trial and error and troubleshooting on the staging server. And then once we were comfortable with the process, then we'll switch over to the production server such that we, we only use it as, as needed and we're, we're likely to have success when we need it. So after we've created our account keys, then we switch over here to the certificates area and we click on, on add. And I'm gonna call this wildcard okay and initially what I'll do is I'll use the staging server here to get get everything working and then once I've done that then all I do is I come back on this request and I switch it over to the production server but initially we're gonna use it for staging. You can change your bit count here if you'd like. We'll go ahead and stick with the default here. And then down here is where we then give it information about what kind, uh, what's the name on the certificate and how we're gonna validate ownership of it. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll pick our, our validation type. And this is what I talked with you about that there's a whole bunch of vendors here that, that you can use that can automate this process. Each one has their own particular ways of you authenticating and being able to to create and modify DNS records that's what this is actually all about using DNS validation you can also do web validation where a particular website information displays to validate that you own the domain but we're going to do the manual way uh, probably the most direct and and I believe what will help you to understand the process most uh, most clearly over here in the domain name we're going to start by the parent domain which for me is ak.bobstaco.com and we don't have to do any other information here and uh, that's it let me just be sure that you caught that and this is from the psfence documentation ak.bobstaco.com now that is a child domain but as far as as my world is uh, the world that i'm responsible for in the project if i come back to this uh, i'm everything here is ak.bobstaco.com and uh, that's that's the world that I'm responsible for. Okay. So I've got that one and I go ahead and click add. And then on this next one here, you can see it came up with another box. I, on it, I also select a DNS manual, but this time I, I note the wildcard. And so I put in asterisk.ak.bobstaco.com. Okay. And then those two are good. These, there's more to be said here. DNS sleep is a wait, a time that once you write information to your DNS database, your, in our case, our Azure hosted DNS database, how long do you wait before Let's Encrypt goes and tries to validate that? You can also put in here commands that when the certificate renews, it can go out and run scripts and do things. You can see, see they've got some examples here. So it's very, very powerful, very powerful stuff. And if we were doing uh, using one of the automated methods, we could put in a, a date here for renewal. It defaults to 60 days. Remember, the certificates are good for 90 days. But because we're doing manual, there is no auto renewal. So nothing that we would put here would, would matter. Uh, I then saved it, and this is exactly what it looks like here. And if we just go in and, and edit it, then you can see here that we have the two entries. We have the parent domain, and then we have the, uh, the wild card. I brought this web page over. This was the one that was linked on that earlier document, just to show you that uh, the steps that we're going to follow here. 
So what we're down to is we're down to this step right here. We went ahead and, and created our, our entry and we saved it and now we're going to click issue. Now it's not going to actually issue and this is the part that I was telling you earlier uh, or if I didn't tell you all, uh, earlier I wanted to tell you now this is where you want to read the information that's presented back to you. So you're going to click on issue and you're going to wait a moment of time and then a screen is going to come up Literally, it looks like this, it's green, it's actually more. And what you're looking for here is it's telling you, it says add the following text record. And when this comes up for us, uh, I want to point it to you and then I'll, I want to go do it. And then uh, you can compare with what we see in the writing here with what we did in our Azure DNS zone. So this is, this is instructions about how we're going to validate that we take ownership of the domain. But let me go ahead and move this out of the way and then let's go ahead then and go back to our certificate excuse me I'll just go ahead and save it here and per the instructions it said to, to issue sometimes things are easier to show than they are to explain but this is the 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 um, the screen that I got back it it's it's bigger than what I'm showing you here it starts up here and it comes down here and I have been playing with this so some of the stuff that you'll see up here in the top like it says already registered and stuff you may not see that but let me point out the key information to you it's right here it says add the following txt record if you've not done this before in DNS we're familiar with A and quad A records well there's also a record type called txt so we're going to add a txt record and we're going to make the name of that record this right here Acme underscore Acme hyphen challenge and then the rest of this this part here this is my my DNS zone and so I don't need to type that in I just need to type that part in so that's going to be the name of the record or the host name for the record and then this is the value that I need to copy and paste into that record and you don't want to include the tick marks it's just start with the W and end with the W you're going to do that twice so we've got one uh, for the parent domain and then one for the wildcard domain. And so then this one, this would be the text that we type in for the wildcard domain. Now, one other thing that's not mentioned here is that you want to set the time to live. When you create a record, you get to pick the time to live value. You want to set it really short. I'm going to set mine to one second. And that's so that if we have to do this and redo this, that you're not working with cached lookups. So you set the time to live on these uh, challenge records to be really short. So what I'm going to do, do, do now is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go into my Azure DNS zone and I'm going to create this information and, and then let, let you take a look at it. I thought it might be help you, helpful just to show you a little bit of this um, and, and uh, just to kind of answer any questions that, that you might not see if I just do it and then show you the result. So I went here to, to the plus sign to a record and then I, I, I copied and pasted out of that green presentation. I copied and pasted this underscore Acme hyphen challenge and then you can see it's going to append to it ak.bobstaco.com. From the drop down here I select txt and for the time to live I go from one hour down to one second and then I'm going to copy and paste that value in and I'll pause the video and do that and let you see that. Okay, so that was the first one. That's that long string. I want to be able to see the whole thing. There we go. And the way that it works in, in Azure DNS is to add that second long, long text string. We just go ahead and click on this and we just add another value right in here and then go ahead and save it. So I added the second value and uh, went ahead and saved it and then I refreshed and now they both show up there. Now what we do next then is, is following the instructions. We go back here and after we've done the, the initial uh, issue, we then ask it to renew. Now the thing is, is that we're currently working with the uh, testing, the staging and and so we're 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 just getting all the pieces in place here so this is the report then that I got back and it didn't issue me a certificate but we, that was understood 
And so what we want to do next is we want to then switch over from the uh, staging environment. We want to switch over to the production environment and go through the same steps. So well, in other words, we'll, we'll go through the, the issues step. We'll then take the new TXT values, the new text values. We'll go and update our, uh, got to save this. We'll update our DNS records, and then we'll come back and and then go with the renew. So you start with an issue, and then you follow that up with the renew. And um, hopefully we'll get a certificate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna let you do that. And I'm going to wrap up this video and we'll come back with a part two where we look at the certificate and then we look at how to export it and import it into uh, RTR and then later we'll import it into server one. So I'll, I'll see you in the next video.